What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Angry Jackaloop. Raw motherfucking VX in the motherfucking hizzies. We got the Corley, we got the Burr, we got the Backwoods. What's the fuck up, people? How you motherfuckers doing? It's Saturday, June 1st, right? Yep, fucking June already. Can you believe we're already halfway through the year? I mean, technically not till July, but I mean, fuck, we're in June. Jesus Christ, this fucking boggles my mind. Boggles the mind, I tell you. Just plain boggles the mind. So, um, I have little bits of stuff to share with you good people. You know, some stuff to talk about. A few little thingy things. Um, and, um... Just kind of gathering my shit together to. Ouch! My dog's going crazy on my back. Uh, to. Uh, ow! What are you doing, shithead? What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? You gonna chill out? You gonna fucking chill out? Are you gonna chill out? Or are you gonna go crazy? Huh? Oh, what are you trying to do? Oh, why you look at me like that? Oh, you give me those loving eyes. Oh, I love you too. Yes, I love you too, Daisy. Oh, my dog's crazy. Bronx in the house. Lira, 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 loop in the... What are you... Okay, you better just chill, doggy. Nope, don't jump down. Don't jump down. If you jump down, I'm not picking you back up. I'm not going to pick you back up. What are you doing? What are you doing? You, you want to be on camera? You want to be on camera? There, you can be on camera. Look, no. Look over here. Over here. Up there. There's a... Look. Up there. No, up there. See? Up there, there's a camera. Say hello. Hello. My name is Daisy. <laughs> oh, fucking Daisy. You're crazy. Get back there. Anyway. Oh, what are you doing? You're being a... Okay, go then. I'm not... No, nope, I'm not picking you up. Fuck that. Nope. I already fucking told you I'm not picking you up. So you can sit your ass on the floor now. All right, guys. So, uh, a lot of... A lot of things have been happening. I wanted to share... Some of these things, I I personally am fucking tickled about, and I really couldn't do it without Lyra's help. So, take a bow, Lyra. Take a bow, take a bow, take a bow. Because Lyra is the shit. I'm going to tell you guys straight up. She has been uh, very helpful um, in me achieving a lot of shit in a pretty short period of time. Um and, you know, you guys hear me say thank you all the time. And I will continue to say thank you because she continues to help me. Um, point and check. So, um, I have three novellas done right now. So, I have um, this one. Right here called Three Simple Rules which I set out uh, to make a love story my way. And I really enjoyed it. It was a fun story. Um, not very dark. You know, action, fun. Probably PG-13. Can't remember how the language is. Language might have been a bit much. So maybe because of language R rating. But not really too over the top. Um... So, yeah, so there's the first one. The second one, she finished editing yesterday or day before yesterday. I'm losing track of time. But anyway, she helped me finish the second one, which had a little bit of a darker tone. And that one is called The Rusted Blade. And it is kind of a trip. That one kind of touches on some dark topics. And there's quite a bit of killing in it. And then there's Infernal Justice, which I just finished. And um, it it it's so bad. It's so bad <laughs> that I felt it mandatory that not only on the book cover artwork but also the very first 
uh, the very first piece of the book starts off before we start fair warning I'm gonna read this to you real quick to people who know me from magic really sucks this may not be your cup of tea cup of tea the story you're about to read has been sitting in my head since the summer of 1989 it was birthed on a filthy bus heading downtown in San Francisco I had joined a few friends to go to an underground club to check out a show of a band I don't even remember. Anyway, the story was born from a simple pamphlet meant to scare people to walk a righteous path. And the only real part about it that I can remember is, and I'm paraphrasing, if you fucked up and acted religious and were really an evil piece of shit, then you would be punished three or six or seven times the deed. Can't recall the exact multiplier. <laughs> um, then almost immediately a story popped in my head. I wondered if I could write a story where the main character was an evil, horrible motherfucker. And the other character was equally as bad. Who would the reader root for? It was an intriguing concept. And at that moment, on that sour smelling bus, Inferno Justice was born. So why did it take me 30 years to write the damn thing? Because it's dark. Darker than I like to write. The things in the story which really bothered me, I told my wife how I really despised my main character, the things he's done, the things he'd do. She asked me, why write it? Good question. I wanted to write it because it's a good story and there's some really good messaging and concepts in there. Plus, when I write, it's more like I'm reporting on something. These things play out in my head like I'm watching a movie. This one tended to have some vibes which borrowed from porn and snuff. Don't get me wrong, I didn't go into explicit detail on most of this, but suffice to say, this shit right here is not intended for younger audiences. This is meant for mature adults who understand the language and harsh realities that exist in our world, sad as it is to say. So now, with the warning and a backstory out of the way, I introduce you to Inferno Justice. So it's so it's so fucking dark that I had to preface that shit. <laughs> I was, oh my god! It's like uh, I was I was writing. I was like, Jesus, I have to take a shower. I have to take a shower after this. It's so fucking filthy. It's just ugh. And so I I warned Lyra. I said, look. Uh, you may not want to edit this this one right here because this is pretty fucked up. And like a fucking soldier, she says, "Fuck it, send it through. I'll edit that shit." So even the stuff that's not in her genre that she may dig, she is so fucking down for the cause that even shit that may scar her soul, she's gonna read anyway. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Yeah, maybe it is. That's not that bad. It's not that bad. I mean, I have read worse, I think. <laughs> I don't know. It's There's parts in there, though, that I'm just like, holy fuck. Like, I went back and I read it, and I was like, what the fucking hell, dude? Seriously, what the fuck? But, you know, thankfully... Even the sordid adventures of Farouk Van Took and Jizzy J is not is not like this because with Farouk Van Took and Jizzy J, there's humor to it. It's it's actually funny. Like you know, dwarf dicks that ruin human women is fucking funny. That's just you know, it's meant to be fucking really outlandish and bizarre. Whereas this shit, I had to dig into the psyche of a fucking serial killer. Like, I had to really put my mind in some dark shit to figure out how this dude would authentically fucking act. Like, and I, 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 that's not me. Like, I'm like, whoa, this dude is really, like, I wanted to. I wanted to crawl into the story myself and shoot this fucker in the face. Like I did like I didn't like him. I was like, dude, seriously? But anyway, you don't I I guess to say if you 
if you there's a character you absolutely hate, then the writer's done something right. And if the writer absolutely hates the character, what does that say? So I don't know. I just thought you guys would get a get a kick out of that because it's crazy. But anyway, the other thing is I got the uh, Naveps website up. Um, that's this whole concept <clears throat> is meant to create very short, simple stories to get people reading who may otherwise never ever ever pick a fucking book up hence the reason why I'm trying to create such a wide variety of content from you know this is uh Daisy get the fuck out of there hey get out of there no shit you're not even in there why is that shit moving like that anyway um, a wide variety of content. So I wanted to create like, you know, kind of, um, uh, a love story mystery. And then I wanted to create kind of a psychological, um, modern day fantasy story with a, with a twist. And then I wanted to do some really demonic, uh, blend of sci-fi and fantasy and you know etc 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 and um that all falls under the Naveps um banner okay so there's going to be two sizes of these little books here uh there's the regular size which everybody should be kind of used to seeing like in bookstores and stuff like that it's called a six by nine so this is six by nine and then I wanted some throwbacks. I wanted uh, some books that were the size of the old little books that um, I grew up reading. I used to love the little uh, pocket edition uh, books. And um, I was thrilled that Lulu.com actually would manufacture this footprint. This size right here will never ever be on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or anything else. For whatever reason, they don't carry this form factor. They're just like, fuck it, we're not going to do it. Um, so, you know, I wanted to create, um, a footprint that was small enough that I could also put the price point really low. So the pocketbooks are $4 and 25 cents, which is kind of funny because comic books right now, I think they're four fifty, almost five bucks for a fucking comic book, which is retarded. Um, and a comic book to get a complete story at this point they do six and eight parters to tell a complete fucking story now, which is just criminal. So if you wanted to get a complete story at six, six issues at five bucks, you're paying 30 bucks for a fucking story, right? 30 fucking bucks, 425 price of one fucking comic book. You get a whole fucking story. Um, and also, like I said, it's easy read because there's not a lot. I mean, this little booklet right here is 118 pages. So 118 pages, um, full up little stories, about 45, 45, 50 pages. So uh, I see something behind Rob Two Blade. Yeah, I know, right? This fucking shit moving back there, crazy as shit. What's up, Vix? But um, that's the goal is to get motherfuckers reading and to give them shit that they would fucking want to read. You know what I mean? So yeah. So every single one of these that comes out is going to be in two form factors. It's going to be the six by nine and the little uh, pocket edition. Uh, a lot of people that have seen this so far have loved the pocket edition, which is really funny to me that, they moved away from this form factor. I was like, this actually is a pretty convenient form factor. Anyway, um, so yeah, so there's three of those that are uh, 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 done. Uh, I'm going to be writing another story, but it won't be, um, it won't be the Naveps. It's going to be part, it's going to be the very first of our uh, real time story time that we do uh every every sunday so the story that i'm going to do next is going to be the rewrite of um i think i'm going to do the rewrite of 
the werewolf one. That werewolf one, I don't know, has been kind of resonating with me lately. So I think I'm going to rewrite that whole story. Um, it's still going to use the same set of keywords that we had before. Uh, and you guys will get credit uh, that through the keywords and stuff like that. And the thing that's fun about it is it will be um, similar form factors, right? So again, going for the novella uh, size, um, again, that's because it makes it more... Uh, portable, more cost effective, and um, also an easier read, right? Because it's not a big honking giant fucking novel. So I'm going to do that one. Uh, there will be a uh, section in the front that talks about the episode that we did online. Uh, it will also have a link to it so people that read the book can actually go see how the hijinks happened in the first place. And then um, the last piece of the real-time story time puzzle is uh, I will actually read the final story so I have an audio version of it. And then that one will be its own YouTube video that goes up and it will also be its own podcast and it will also be going out to the different audio things. So if you guys haven't guessed what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get a lot of different uh, nets out there. So the real-time story time, that fills a, a certain uh, need and genre. Um, and, you know, it will be its own thing. Um, the Navep stuff, it will be its own thing. The full-up novels, like Magic Really Sucks 2, Magic Really Sucks 3, Convergence 2012, um, Happy Core, Book 1, the Chemo Jones, uh, Chemo Jackson Saga, etc 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 those are all separate things but they're all meant and designed to give me a lot more exposure as an author and also to kind of tell the world hey sit up and take notice motherfuckers I'm not playing games here I am actually um, uh, hell bent on coming in and fucking up the status quo and uh challenging what people have said uh everybody that i've been talking to that are you know authors agents blah 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 say this is a horrible idea they're like there's no money to be made here and i was like mm, you know what i really don't give a shit i think this is a very valuable platform good size uh easy to pump a ton of content out and keep people reading stuff that they like. So as, as these stories come out and people start saying, hey, I really like the, uh, you know, I really like the um, uh, Utopia series or I really like the Happy series or I really like, you know, whatever, um, or certain characters, then I can go ahead and, you know, uh, really responsively say, oh, shit, you know, I got 10 people that like this particular character. Fuck, I can go bang that story out right fucking now. You know, because uh, Lyra can attest, um, I'm averaging a story about every three days. So every three days that I sit down, and typically what's been happening is I start like on a, like a Friday. Uh, I start like on a Friday and then go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I'm done. And then I will take it and put it up and share with her and say, hey, I've got a new one for you. And she jumps in and helps. You know what I mean? So... Let's see here. Uh, I like reading RPGs such as Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, Exalted, uh, Cyan, Aberrant, Rifts, etc. That's cool. I haven't actually read anything um, um, from uh, White Wolf. That's all White Wolf stuff, right? I'm pretty sure that's White Wolf. Um, ah, it sucks you're freezing up. Let's see. Uh, hope everyone is doing well. Yeah, I think... Uh, See who do we all do we have? We got Corley Bear, Backwoods, Bronx, Lyra, Blade. What's up, what's up, Blade? Um Brian Vix. We uh looks like we don't have Yak on right now. Maybe Yak is uh taking a nap or something. Um so yeah, so that's what's been going on there. Uh let's see. There was some other stuff I wanted to share with you guys. Oh, I also have been doing um workbooks so this one is a little bit more uh reflective to the folks that are on my um um 
Angry Jack upside. Uh, Vic says, I see you doing a choose your own adventure book and it would be best. I have actually thought about that. I've thought about that. And um, uh, that requires a little bit more planning just because, um, you know, you got to go, okay, this is this, this is this, this is this. Then you got to plop it in and say, Paige, go, if you like this, if 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 you kiss his ass, go to, <laughs> go to page 69. And you go to page 69 and be like, why are you kissing his ass? Don't be a bitch. Go back to page 15 and kill him. <laughs> I think I'll do something fun like that. You know what I mean? Um, most riffs is uh, Palladium, Palladium books. Yeah. So this one right here, um, this is for really people that are disaster preparedness minded. Uh, and this one is a lot different, a lot more different than my other workbooks that I've done in the past, such as Task Killer, Author's Workbook, uh, et cetera, et cetera. This one ended up being really time consuming because it has multiple sections in it. And there'll be a dedicated video on this. And I have another one that I'm going to be dedicated video on. I think you guys are really going to enjoy the, uh, uh, the, um, what is it? Uh, money, money, money. Where's my money, bitch workbook. I think that would just be fucking hilarious, hilarious. But this one uh, has an intro. It has are you prepared test. It has the reliant motto, uh, units of measurements, uh, family details. You have two sheets for family details. Um, survival priorities, 72 hours versus a four weeks. Barter items, worksheet, bug out bags, intro, bug out bags, summary. You get 10 bug out bag worksheets. Each of those worksheets is way, way uh, sufficient for you to pretty much list out all of your shit in your go bag and be able to tell yourself where you tucked it. Uh, if you're like me and you created a bunch of go bags and then later you're like, fuck, what do I have in these goddamn bags? I haven't been in these bitches in like a year plus. You know what I mean? Because time for me just flies. So... You know, a lot of times I'll be like, what the fuck? Anyway, uh, water overview, purifying water, uh, five water storage logs, five food storage logs, medicine, children, and meds. There's like a little worksheet that talks about dosing for uh, children and their weight. Um, five medicine logs, uh, ammo intro, uh, five weapon logs. Uh, and 10 note sheets and also six, I believe one, two, three, four, five, five, I guess five blank sheets for you to draw and do, uh, whatever you want to do. Hey, what's up that one other guy, how you doing? Um, so this is, uh, really just for folks that really are planning to, uh, be very serious in regards to uh, preparing for emergencies and things of that nature. Um, you know, there's like different things in here that uh, kind of give you a real gut check. As I was doing it myself, I was like, shit, man, I haven't done this. Um, let's see. Ran downstairs. They saw now flying through the air. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that one's there. And my wife noted, she's like, man, the writing in that one's pretty small. And I'm like, yeah, it is pretty small because it's covering a lot of shit. So this one writing, for example, is really tiny, but it's because it was the top 50 barter items, right? So, and then notes. So it's, it's like gold and silver, water filters, ammunition, alcohol, cigarettes, coffee, tea, food, MREs, blah, 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 blah. And it's just really meant to help you put your mindset in the right place while you're thinking about uh, disaster preparedness, right? Um, you know, and then the, th the section about bug out bags, it talks about, you know, is it for every, you know, uh, bug out bags for every adult, like why bother, example scenarios, key points to keep in mind, uh, reliant notes, because uh, I have a, a group um and it's not a group that's kind of open for invitation it's a i don't want to say it's a secret group it's it's not like i'm hiding it but i have a group that's called we are the reliant it's been around for uh 
quite a few years. Um, and it's different than the Jackalope crew. The Reliant members are, uh, a lot of the members are ex-military, law enforcement, um, search and rescue, EMT, things like that. Folks that um, wanted to create their own cell structure. And uh, so we have uh, a very loose motto that guides the Reliant. And uh, so it's just one of those things that uh, we 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 uh, we have a certain methodology and stuff that we do. And there's things that are inside of this that Reliant members uh, follow. So um, take from it what you will. For example, uh, there's a section that says this is what normal people do and this is what Reliant are mandated to do. So it's not even like. If you're a Reliant member and you're using this, it's not even up for discussion. This is actually part of um, the group's agreement. I don't want to say like vows and shit like that because then it sounds like a fucking cult and shit like that. But that's not really what it is. Um, it is. Uh, it does have a very, uh, very simple... Uh, mandate to the to the the group members it's like the way of the reliant we are the reliant we learn so that we may teach we plan for adversity and cherish the privilege we endeavor to master our emotions embracing embracing rational thought we are not controlled by fear we're not controlled by rage we are not driven by greed we are perpetually optimistic we work tirelessly honor virtue humility truth and justice are what we strive for each of us provides for another and never just for ourselves when others are surrounded by the darkness, we are the light to guide them. We are the Reliant. So that's it, the Reliant workbook. So that is up on Lulu if you guys are interested in that. Um, you know, there's always going to be links and stuff. It's really easy to find this shit uh, if it's something that you guys are uh, uh, something that you guys are interested in. But I do have a fun one. Like I said, I'll do individual videos for this shit later. I'm just kind of catching you guys up. On all of the shit that I've been doing lately. Um, so you guys know uh, what's been going on. One more thing I wanted to, to bring up. I know a lot of people. This A lot of the folks that are on this channel are here because of, um, you know, the, the equipment testing and gear testing and stuff like that. There are um, three factors that um, I feel I have to have some transparency to let you guys uh, know what's going on. Number one money uh my money is fucked really bad so you know it is what it is i'm not crying about it i'm not um i'm not trying to do anything outlandish sell things do blood drives anything of that nature but it is a factor to why i'm not reviewing new gear i can't afford new gear so if i don't have new gear i can't really comment on the gear but I do still have a backlog of older gear that I can go through. But then that leads to um, issue number two. Issue number two is uh, my current physical shape. Uh, let's see. How do, I, how do I illustrate this? Okay. Right arm. Dominant arm. I can hold this up. No problem. Okay. Not too bad. Left arm. Oh. Okay, this this hurts. This little blade right here. Boom. All here. Boom. Bitches. Especially right fucking here. Um Yeah, we can get some conspiracy talk in a minute. Um I'm just letting people know. I'm just just kind of a status update real quick, and then we can jump into conspiracy shit. Um so hard use testing right now, no go, mm -mm, can't do it. And then the final number three is time. Uh, I don't have time. That's it. So I mean, that's that's the honest to god truth three factor why I'm not doing the uh, the old school gear reviews. Um, money, health, and time. Uh, I am using every spare ounce of energy and time that I have to creating content uh the books and all the other stuff but that being said 
there. I've updated you guys in regards to that. Done deal. All right. So, Mr. Brian, what do you want to talk about? What's on your mind? What What would you like to have a conversation in regards to? Uh, the fact that YouTube is constantly um, knocking motherfuckers out of the box that have historically have had uh, fairly decent mouthpieces. Uh, recently, they attacked Secure Team uh, Secure Team Ten. I think that's his name. Um, what's up, nut job? Woo -woo! Um, the fact that they are demonetizing complete channels that have anything to do with guns. Um, yeah. So YouTube's doing all of that, but I believe that is also just a distractionary, um, distractionary uh, topics. Uh, does a hot dog count as a sandwich? No, it does not count as a sandwich. And there are a few reasons why I would say that. Um, but that does bring up an interesting question. Then if a hot dog is not considered a sandwich, what would you consider it? Hot dog. That's what I would call it. I'd give it its own category. Just like I give a hamburger its own category. Although a hamburger would be closer related to a sandwich than a hot dog. Primarily because the bun is a singular piece. It's not typically two pieces of bread. It's one bread that's split right down the middle that you insert the meat into. So that's why I don't consider a hot dog to be a sandwich. Also, the meat delivery system, the hot dog as a cylinder as opposed to sliced meat, um, also kind of takes it out of my definition of a sandwich. <laughs> Oh, shit. Um, so that was a good one. Thank you, uh, that one other guy. Let's see. Uh, if you're strapped for cash, we understand. Health concerns, you understand, too. I know you motherfuckers do. All the all the crew crew that's here all the time, day in and day out, you motherfuckers, you guys, you know, I'm not really doing that uh, for you guys. Uh, it's for these guys that kind of pop in on a channel once every bloom fucking moon, and then they go, Dude, uh, I'm still waiting for you to review and chop the fucking frozen pig head with that blade. And I'm like, oh my fucking hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh my god. Let's see uh, what else here. Um, and hot dog is a sausage. Yeah, see, see, that's, you know, it's just one of those type of things, man. So, um, more conspiracy shit. Well, since we're talking, uh, I mentioned Secure Team. I think the reason he got bitch slapped and then uh, reinstated because the community just went bananas to help him. Um, you know, when it comes to things like aliens um, and spaceships, like I don't, I don't dispute the fact that there are things flying around in the sky. I don't dispute the fact that there are abductions i don't dispute the facts that people have seen bizarre things that they believe are aliens i don't think we've gone outside i don't i don't think space is what they tell us space is i think space is um is a very elaborate holographic uh computer simulation i don't i don't think we've ever left um our particular dome um and I, and i <laughs> and i when i talk about a dome um i'm not saying we're on flat earth or any of that stuff i think we are on a fucking monstrous monstrous planet or plane um and i and lately i've been thinking we are on an infinite plane um but I think each of these um, these bubbles uh, are part of this massive fucking uh, massive existence. And when we see shit like aliens and stuff like that, I don't think the motherfuckers are coming from outer space. I think either they're off off phase dimensional, or they could be from an adjacent bubble. And they've just found a way to kind of tunnel through and come up. Uh, we see a lot of shit coming out of the water. We see a lot of shit, um, you know, uh, coming from Antarctica. We see tons of weird shit coming out of Antarctica recently. 
within the last couple of years. Holy shit, there has been some stuff uh, blasting our weather patterns from Antarctica. And I'm like, okay, so there's some definite weather wars going on. Uh, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. You just have to look outside. Um, and people are saying, oh, it's climate change. And it's like, mm, yeah, okay. Look at the fucking chemtrails and then see a direct correlation between when that shit started and then weather going fucking wonky. Um, and then I like how people say other stuff like, um, you know, they, they, they dis, um, they, uh, what do you call that? wave away the sun as a, a factor in a lot of weather stuff as well. And I'm like, you cannot ignore the sun because when you've got polar caps and other planets that are melting, uh, that coincide with some of our melts. And, uh, it also happens to coincide with solar maximums and things of that nature. Um, I'm like, how can you not look at the fucking sun, you know? But, uh, I don't know, whatever. Uh, several faculty members who studied Antarctica has developed Alzheimer's over the last five years. Gee, I wonder why. I think I think there's definite portals. I think there's definite things like inner Earth, uh, which would make a lot of sense when you stop and think about it. I think things like the moon. I think the moon is a fucking... Um, now, when I say a dome, you guys have to understand um, what I talk about with a dome extends up beyond um, the moon, okay? Um, and I think the moon and the sun, I think those two celestial bodies are a lot closer uh, than what they're saying. But still, relatively speaking, if we're on this massive plane, um, and I think a lot of these things are... Oh, how do I explain it? God's, I'm going to, just going to really simplify it. God's programming. Okay. This is God Sims 6.9. <laughs> um, but I definitely think inside our planet, I think there, there's shit down there. I think the whole thing that they try to tell us about, uh, uh, our planet is full of shit. And I think if they cut a cross section of our fucking, um, planet, like the old ant, uh, the ant things, you know, the little ant displays, you had glass and you can see all the tunnels and shit. I guarantee you, you took a cross section of our plane, um, and put it there. Uh, we would see a whole lot of crazy shit. And I just think they're just completely full of shit and lying to us pretty much about everything. Now, I'm not one of these uh, conspiracy guys that will run around and, you know, this, that, and say, you know, fear porn or anything else. I definitely think a lot of the scary shit that they're talking about is meant to scare people. But I don't think, at least I hope, my personal belief, though, is all of these... Um, um uh, extinction level events i don't think it's going to happen i really don't i think each one of these zones or each one of these bubbles or domes uh is a little petri dish of different things and i've said before now and, and i stand by it i think we're fucking a zoo personally i think each one of these little bubbles is a little ecosystem uh to preserve a certain species and i think humanity has probably almost wiped ourselves out so many fucking times that they finally got fed up and said here let's just throw these motherfuckers in a dome here and we'll just keep an eye on them and every so often we'll take some genetic sampling from them and we'll put it in another one and we'll see if we can make a hardier group a smarter group etc cetera, etc cetera, right uh, a lot of genetic manipulation and stuff like that to try to recreate something that maybe uh, went extinct a long time ago. And um, maybe there was something special about us that they're trying to preserve and bring back or something else. Who knows? I don't fucking know. All I know is the bullshit that they tell us on a daily basis is complete and utter fucking rubbish. This duopoly of 
oh, you're a Democrat, or oh, you're a Republican, or oh, you're a liberal, or oh, you're a conservative, or oh, you're Coke, or oh, you're Pepsi, or oh, you're Muslim, or oh, you're a Catholic, or oh, fuck off on all of that shit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not saying there's not flying shit. I just... See, here's the thing that makes me very suspect about flying saucers. If you look at all of the photographic evidence of UFOs, they directly correlate to the current trend technologies of what we have right now. Look at our cars. So if you go back to the 50s and 60s, why is it the fucking spaceships look like our fucking cars did back then? Why? They wanted to have aesthetics similar to our vehicles, so their ships morphed to look like our cars, but yet they flew, but we couldn't fly. And they thought, well, aesthetically, maybe our ships are more pleasing to these fucking humans. You know what I'm saying? Um, no, I think we've all been abducted. I think I think they take us all the time. Um, I think they take us all the time. They tag us. They check our health. They do different things. They uh, They check uh for different types of growth they they probably introduce into certain people's uh lineage um certain types of genetic modification to see how it goes and then some people will develop these weird diseases and stuff and they're like okay that was a failure or whatever or i think they even have favorites you know i might be you know we'll call them aliens just keep it everything simple um i call them caretakers or or um or call them zookeepers, whatever. Um, I'm like, what was that fucking gorilla that got killed? Uh, Karam, Karambi, or Karambo, or whatever. Karambi. Maybe I'm their fucking, you know, prized fucking gorilla. So they abduct me on a regular basis. Cause check this shit out. Look at this. Check this out. This is fucking weird. I'm going to share with you guys something. Okay, so if I go like, let me see if I can get it just right so you guys can see. Oh, there it is. This thing right here. Okay, this. You see this mark right here? See how deep that shit goes? Okay. I never had that shit. I started noticing headaches. Really bad fucking headaches. Um, maybe three months ago. Right behind these eyes. Like, I'd get these fucking ridiculous fucking headaches. And then I'd have these really fucked up fucking dreams. And I'd be like, okay, whatever. And then one day, I started noticing, hey, I got a... I got a weird bruise here or something, you know? I was like, what the fuck is that? You know, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, damn, what is that? You know? And then I did that, and I'm like, whoa, this some bitch goes deep. Then I pressed in. I have a fucking gouge here. Now, granted, I've been dome-shotted more times than I could count. I've been hit with guitars. I've been hit with bats. I've been curb-stomped quite a few fucking times. Um, I've tumbled off of bikes and head planted uh i mean i've had so many head traumas to the point that i've got a little membrane floating back inside my left eye and they said if i see a lightning storm and my eye goes black goes blank on me right there it just means i've torn my retina loose and i have to go get seen or whatever so that's all from head trauma but i do not recall ever having some shit like this this is so fucking pronounced and i'm just like okay whatever so i kind of joked i joked to myself the other day i was sitting there and i was looking in the mirror and i'm like dude what the fuck and i started laughing i said eh, fuck i guess somebody on the abduction team fucked up carved a little too much out of the fucking old skull and said ah fuck he won't notice <laughs> and put me back in my bed started up time again and and i woke up going oh my god what the fuck you know this is, you know, there's weird shit that happens all the time. And I definitely think, um, I definitely think there's abductions. I definitely think, you know, the, the anal probing, all that stuff. I think all that shit is real because, you know, the anal probing and stuff. Okay. We can explain that very simply. That was basically the aliens doing the, uh, uh colonoscopies, right? They're just checking your shit out. They're making sure you're fine. It's just people just were awake. They weren't totally knocked out or they retained that memory for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, no, I firmly believe that 
we're fucked with on a regular basis. I think we're trapped here, just like a tiger or a lion will be stuck in a fucking zoo. And they've created these environments for us, and they say, okay, you go fucking have fun, go fuck like rabbits and pop out babies, and we'll, we'll see what happens in pod one, pod two, pod three, pod four, and they introduce little social you know, changes in these different environments, and they're trying to replicate something. You know, how do I know this? Because that's what I would do. Plain and simple. You know, I I remember my wife was in school and she had to write these papers uh, on how to do certain types of research and how to get results if your hands were tied with certain things. And I always figured out how to do it. And then they would come back at me and say, well, from a moral point of view, that's wrong. And I'm like, well, from a Rob Rick's point of view, fuck off because your instructions didn't have shit to do with morality. Your instructions were... What kind of experiments could you do to get this kind of results? Done. Here's your fucking results. Here's how you can do it. Here's how you can monitor. Here's how you can get your 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 control group versus your live group versus this. And they're like, well, that's unethical. I'm like, fuck you then. You didn't say anything about it in the instructions. So, you know, when you're you're talking about creating life and, you know, trying to replicate something that may have gone extinct shit who gives a fuck right the shit's extinct like if we were bringing back dinosaurs right obviously you'd want to keep them in some kind of a controlled environment so they wouldn't fucking velociraptor our asses and we'd be able to watch their growth and try to see if we could replicate what we've got now we might have separate strands of dna and we're kind of splicing in other shit and uh, okay so now you might be looking at me saying, well, dude, human beings have been around for thousands upon thousands of years and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, maybe these things that are working on us are so fucking long lived or maybe their perception of time is not like ours. So for them, a hundred thousand years might be a fucking day so they can do bloop, introduce these variables, step away, go take a coffee break and come back. Oh, check that shit out. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, I want a fucking dinosaur too. I want a little one though. I don't want a big one. I want a little one. Unless I can ride it. If I could fucking ride like a T-Rex, that'd be dope. That'd be dope. You know which one was my favorite though? My favorite. I don't know why this motherfucker was my favorite. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of like, eh, whatever. It's like a big turtle really. But that one that kind of like a big giant turtle with the spikes on the side and had that big ass mace tail with the spikes on it, blap. You know, I liked, I always liked that one. I don't know why. I didn't start liking T-Rexes and Velociraptors and shit like that until really uh, the motherfucking um, the movie, Jurassic Park. And so that, I didn't really give a fuck about dinosaurs, really. Although, I did like the old school sharks. Megalodons. I've always been a fucking fan of megalodons. And I've always been a fan of great white sharks. I fucking love them. Fucking love those bastards. Uh, Earth was a colony wor world. Humans are either already a spacefaring race or we were engineered to be slaves to dig for gold uh, for the uh, Anunnaki aliens. Yeah, I have recently have come across stuff like that. Um, it's funny because when I wrote Convergence 2012 and I made a race called the Anukai. Anunnaku. Anukai. I was like, oh my fucking hell. Like after, like if you go back and you look at all my notes that I was doing back then, I was like, holy shit guys, there's fucking, like I had, I had a general idea about reptiles, but that was because as a kid growing up when Kirk was fighting those fucking things and then those things that were on the other show, uh, center of the earth, journey to the center of the earth or whatever, the, the slee stacks or whatever. Like I already had a predetermined notion of reptiles in my mind so when i wrote convergence 2012 yeah i had reptiles in that bitch and then i had grays which i called kunuks but i wanted a good guy race that was hell bent on saving the humans and so i came up with this group called the anukai and there were so many weird shit that happened while i was writing that story that later i realized you know what anunnaki cocksuckers or whatever they were probably doing pr shit with my fucking head and uh was making them out to be the good guys and whatnot and i'm just like fuck whatever 
But uh, anyway, ancient cultures claim dinosaurs lived with us. We even found dino footsteps stepping on the human footprints. I don't, you know what? Again, I don't, I don't deny that the history that we are presented is filled with inaccuracies and, and bullshit. For example, I just saw something the other day that really gave me pause. There was a group, oh my God, what did it called? Um, Tastarians or Tenarians or uh, not Tenarians, that's Denaris, Denaria, whatever. But there was a group and there was a concerted effort during World War II to eradicate this group of people. And their culture still remains like people still sing their songs and all this other stuff. And it's crazy because they went and they wiped out this group of people. And then they started to go through and burn out all the references to them of the land that they used to be, the, the culture, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, and I was like, I thought about that for a second. I was like, how hard would it be really to eradicate a group of fucking people and how many uh, generations would it take and as i thought about it i said shit two to three generations you could really wipe out all historical references to a group of people so for example let's say somebody came in and just fucking ass raped america okay and we're all America, Second Amendment, woo, 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 you know, founding fathers. If they came through and dropped a monster boot on her ass, right? And then they found a way to either kill all of the adults, right? So wipe out all the adults. Think of shit like the Spanish flu, um, which was really, really, really devastating against uh, fighting age strong adults. It didn't do what the normal flu does, which is fuck up children and, and old people. It, it went after really strong immune systems. But so, so somebody has like a modified Spanish flu and wipes out all the adults. Only the kids are left. The kids, you know, let's say five years old. So there's some way that some genetic modification to this particular plague. It takes, you know, certain matured cell structures that five-year-olds don't have yet. So they wipe out all the adults. So you got five-year-olds now. And you have the controlling group of adults come in. And they start to educate the remaining children. And the children grow up. And then they have kids, but the education continues. So that's two generations. Okay, and then three generations. By the time the third generation comes, unless there's uh, relics or remnants of some kind of history of the United States, there would be no idea of founding fathers of the Second Amendment or anything else because there was nobody to pass that information on. Now, I know some of you are like, well, Rob, there's it's the digital age. There's, there's things everywhere. Ha ha, but it's digital. Digital means malleable, means I can fuck with it. I can change it. It's not set in stone. Okay. Well, there's printed books. Aha. Well, we go find those books and we do what you see a lot of cultures do. Gee, wasn't there a lot of Nazi book burning? There's a lot of book burning shit that happened during World War II. And there's been other groups of people that have systematically eradicated uh, references to civilizations. Shit, we got next to really no information about Mayans at this point. Yeah, we have some of their, you know, little um, uh, tablets and some of their scrolls and stuff, but they're they're not by any stretch of imagination conclusive and uh, uh, expansive. They're not they're not enough for us to actually have uh, a really clear cut understanding of everything about them. Huh? Yeah, even Egypt. You know, we know a lot about Egypt, but we're finding things to kind of counter, you know, counterpoint to what they've been saying about Egypt. Shit. Sumerian. Oh, wow. We don't have a lot about Sumerian. Huh. That's crazy. We don't have a lot about Sumerian. Wow. But if you stop and think about that shit, that's crazy as fuck, right? Now, here's something that's really going to fuck with your head. 
all these dark cabals, all these evil fucks and everything, they all trace back to one entity. And I said it before and I'll say it again. Why is there a, uh, the, the name of this particular entity has something related to the following, uh, following instruments and in sports. Uh, baseball, football, basketball. Uh, yeah, there's a common word in all of those. There's some conspiracy for you. Trace that shit back. You trace that, that, that cult back far enough you start to see a whole lot of scary shit and you start to see that ideology that that ideology oh i'm fucking this word up that idol worship can't remember how you say that word that idol worship of this particular fucker is uh entrenched in a ton of stuff like it's like whoa like whoa whoa like you go what the fuck like what the literal fuck like i found this out by accident i was writing uh the sort of adventures of farouk von took and jizzy j and i thought ball was a third string demon i didn't even think he was really that high in the hierarchy of fucking uh demonology and um you know occult literature whoa i was wrong i was really fucking wrong because Worship of this particular cock, this this particular cocksucker uh, predates any um, Luciferian stuff, any any uh, any satanic or anything else. Like it goes way back. And then if you cross cross that over with your ancient alien um, research, and you start to deal with the um, the Anunnaki and you start to look at um, these different um, Sumerian gods, Inki, Enlil, things like that, you start to go, whoa, whoa, there seems to be a long lineage of entities, and these are basically, in my opinion, uh, the zookeepers. I think Enlil, Inki, all of those motherfuckers, those are zookeepers, uh, those same ones that um these guys talk about doing the genetic manipulation of the human species yeah but the you got you always got to ask yourself a question why bother <laughs> human beings take immense amount of time to grow and create as opposed to um an artificial workforce i mean why do you think people are being worked out of a job right now because machines are more efficient. They're faster at it. They're better at it. They don't make mistakes. They don't get tired. You just feed them a certain fuel. So if the goal has always been to dig for fucking gold, right? Because that's what a lot of these fuckers talk about, gold. And I do believe gold is more than just a precious commodity. I think there are some actual uh, magical properties to gold. Um then why not have uh, mechanisms or machinery or some other automated way of doing it? Human labor uh, is, is counterproductive. Making us smart enough to have these types of conversations, counterproductive. Because um, the smarter that something gets, the harder it is to control it much easier just to have something that is just a widget uh, widget pusher, just a button pusher, right? And for a long time, that's what we were seeing with human beings. We were going these conveyor belts. We were doing these things. We had specialized training. We did these things like hamburgers. I am the guy that makes the tomatoes. I, I cut the tomatoes. That's my job. You know, then they said, oh, well, we're going to downsize that. Now, Rob, instead of tomatoes, you're going to do tomatoes and the lettuce and the onions, and you're going to put the ketchup and the mustard on too. Oh, okay, I could do that, right? Now it's getting to the point where, you're going to have machines been doing all that shit, you know? Um, exactly. That uh, uh, cowboys versus aliens, right? Yeah, you have something that would come down. It would ping the surface. Uh, all of these metals and uh, different things will have a different density. They'll ping it. Bing! Oh, we have a good cluster here. Fly over it. 
blast the shit, suck it up, disintegrate the loose matter, keep the dense matter done. You don't need to genetically create a fucking bajillion human beings to toil and labor and do that. There's no need for it. Now, if you're building a fucking million women for a harem for you to go and just fuck like crazy and you just have the ultimate narcissistic god complex and you want to have a million people bowing and praying to you um and maybe that is something maybe the fact that somebody that prays to you or gives you divinity maybe there's a transference of energy that would make a lot of fucking sense but then at the same time you wouldn't want to fucking rule them and kill them off in mass to build pyramids and shit you'd want them to love you and want to die for you and everything else and you know worship you and give you that um unless you are a shadow creature and you like to feed off of misery and pain and suffering and sadness then yeah creating a fucking bajillion fucking people and then ass raping them in mass so you can have a smorgasbord of pain that could make sense so really what you have to figure out is what's the objective? Why would they do something? Because you, you, you got to understand, human beings, we're, we're shitty. We suck. It takes nine months for a baby to gestate. Then the baby is born. And the baby, for all practical purposes, is completely fucking useless for the first two years of its life. And then it can start to do stuff. Um... Aliens in our past were lazy. That's fine. They were lazy, but still. Creating life, waiting for life and everything else is a complete waste. It is a waste of time. There's lazy and there's stupid. And I find it incredibly hard to believe that anything that had that level of sophistication of technology available to do genetic manipulation, to do cloning, to do uh, splicing of their DNA with something else's DNA to create a worker group of people... And then sit there, why not cultivate a faster breeding group, um, limit their cognitive abilities so that they just understand the bare minimums, uh, and then go from there. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense because you would imagine a group like that would have had their own problems with uh, slavery and uprisings and things of that nature in their own personal histories that they would say, so there would be some guy that said, dude, I've seen the movie on this. We shouldn't create these things, dude. These things are going to later on overrun us, dude. That's, I've seen that movie. You know what I mean? It just makes perfect fucking sense, right? That they would be like, hmm, yeah, this is a bad idea. You know? Cost effectiveness? Eh, I don't know. I don't think a human being is cost effective at all, to be honest with you. Um, I think if I was going to genetically modify some shit, I would have probably taken something like... Um, Let's say if we're going for gold, okay, so let's say that's the objective here. I like the ideas of hands because having fingers and stuff like that to manipulate tools, that's awesome. Um, I think I would have did that. I would have had hands, but the hands also would have had some kind of retractable claws for digging or whatever because, you no, know, we're going cheap here. We're not giving them equipment, right? We just want them to dig and process, right? We're being lazy. And then I would probably find some native animal that digs and I would splice those fucking genes together and create my own hybrid animal that I could have dig, carry a lot of weight because gold's heavy as fuck. So I'd want something like a donkey, some kind of a, you know, a pack animal that I could do. So I'd want to, I want to, uh, I want to have as much flexibility on it as possible for it to dig, harvest, carry, because I'm lazy. I don't want to carry this shit. And I want it to be somewhat useful pretty quick. I want a short gest uh, gestation period. I want it to be up on its feet relatively quick. I want the mama and the daddy animals to be able to teach it relatively quick so that it's doing stuff so I don't have to waste my time teaching it. So, yeah, I don't know. Human beings? Bad decision. I think really bad decision. The only thing that human beings have going for them is assuming that we are somewhat similar in appearance would be the sex aspect, right? Yeah, let's have these things go dig gold. And yeah, the female ones, yeah, we'll fuck those. That's it. Really. You know, unless there's something else. There's something else that's missing. That's what I'm saying. 
there might have been a, a really logical reason for it. You know, the materials might have been more readily available. It might have been easier for them to do that. Who knows? But all I'm saying is, I don't think we are the only ones. I think some of these aliens and shit we see, those are other variations of things. So that's just my opinion. And opinion is just that. There's no way I can fucking ever prove this shit. Short of them knocking on my door. I go and open a door and they're like, Mr. Ricks, uh, congratulations and we're sorry. Congratulations. What? Congratulations. You're right. Sorry. We got to kill your ass now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like centaurs and shit like that. Hill giants. You know, things that are fucking massive that could do stuff. And yes, historically, there have been accounts of giants. So they could have had those as part of the workforce. But, um, and they could have had centaurs too. We could be pretty much figuring shit out right now. So we could look at mythology and say, okay, some of these mythological creatures, what would they have been good for as far as slaves? Oh, this, this, and this. Oh, shit. Okay, well, now they're not processing gold anymore. And now they have us. We, we won the race for the smart ones. So now we have tools and we do our own digging and we do our own process. And that's why all our gold constantly disappears because we're still paying tributes. Uh, maybe that's why the government doesn't let anybody fuck with Antarctica because that's where the um, the uh, the Anunnaki and all of them are all hanging out, throwing fucking raves and orgies and shit. And then the elites are doing their evil shit, and they're getting um, you know the uh, the chemicals that they do for sacrificing and terrifying children and uh, all this other stuff. And these are things that the 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 upper elite of the aliens are teaching our elites. And then um, we process the gold and we do these gold acquisitions from time to time. And those are just tributes. We're just paying tributes to the fucking aliens so that they don't come and ass rape us and decide to do a 2.0 humans that are actually the centaurs, right? So, I don't know. We could have just inadvertently stumbled as we're bullshitting here on the actual history of humanity. And, um, you know, and there are probably groups watching right now going, <gasps> fuck this motherfucker and these people they're on to the truth so if you guys get knocks on your doors too and they say look at the light because i believe a lot of shit we see in movies that's real deal i think they do the shit in the movies so that when one of us tries to tell the rest of us oh my god dude they did it blah blah i was like dude i saw men in black haha ha, that's funny you're fucking an idiot you know i was like oh that's right they did do that men in black oh shit they did do that Oh, I find it very interesting. You watch a lot of these fucking movies and they have as above is below and like things that are kind of common threads that appear over and over and over and over again, you know? And you know what else is funny is even in my own writing shit that I do, like there's these common threads that pop into my head from time to time. And I'm like, you yeah, already wrote that. I don't want to write that again. You know? And then sometimes my stories, like, they're assholes. Like, this Infernal Justice. 30 fucking years that bitch has been sitting in my head. And every so often it would come to the front, like, hey, uh, you want to write me? And like, no, no, not really. And then for whatever reason, the other day, write me, motherfucker. It's like, uh, I don't want to write you. Write me, motherfucker. I don't want to write you. Write me, motherfucker. Oh, I guess I'm writing you. So, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know. I think, I think there's a certain amount of mind control. I think there's a certain amount of, um, things that they do to kind of indoctrinate us, to get us conditioned for certain types of things. Like, I'm fully expecting a quote unquote alien invasion that is just complete bullshit. And I think they're going to do that to, um, really just force control on us we'll all come together because there's a alien threat and we have to come together and we have to do this so that we can weed out the alien threat yeah okay that's gonna be like 9 11 times a thousand you know what i mean it's fucking bullshit um odin promised to rid the world of frost giants threatening midgard and asgard i don't see any frost giants vote odin no oh, fuck yeah woden all father fuck yeah um it's funny because i like to do that from time to time like i'll fuck with my kids and i'm like you know 
it was really tough, guys. And like, what? I'm like, it's tough fucking hunting vampires and werewolves and all this other shit. You know, I write my stories and stuff, but at night, Daddy goes out and fucking hunts these things and kills them. They're like, whatever, Dad. I'm like, oh yeah, you ever seen a fucking werewolf? And they're like, no. And I'm like, you're fucking welcome. <laughs> and they're just like, you're an idiot, Dad. I'm like, I thought it was pretty fucking funny myself. I thought it was hilarious, you know. But um, anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, we could continue on this, this train for days. I mean, you look at the water, the water's got stuff in there to control us. And it's also a byproduct of the aluminum, aluminum, um, which is the fluoride and fluoride has been shown to, uh, be a mood stabilizer. Um, in addition to making teeth so bright and white, um, Right, and then um, you know the chemtrails. There's all kinds of heavy metals in there, so you know there's weather modification there. There's also probably uh, other things mixed inside of there. Like I've always thought it was funny uh, watching all of these people talk revolution and get mad and everything else, and then they fucking just go home and chill the fuck out. I'm like, yeah, because. There's only a certain level of anger people can exhibit now because they have all this mood altering shit, plus all the people on fucking Xanax and all these other drugs. It's fucking retarded. It's like they they want us to do certain things so they could usher in martial law, but then they have us so sedated and drugged up that we can't even formulate a fist. <laughs> so dude, they go. Well, fuck, that didn't work. All right, what's what's plan B? Well, plan B is uh, we'll kill them with this. We'll do the uh, vaccinations and stuff, you know? And I'm like, okay, um, you know, it's funny because um, I vaccinate my kids. I have for a long time. Um, and, uh, you know, one of my kids has Asperger's. Uh, one probably has a very mild uh, version of Asperger's and the other one is, um, she's, she's just normal. She's a normal kid. Um, and you know, there could have been something with vaccinations that I did that could have caused that, or probably more probable is the fact that I myself am completely fucking retarded. And I probably passed on some of that retard gene, uh, to my kids, uh, because a lot of the ones that, um, uh, when I talk with them, they just remind me of me. And I'm just like, fuck, you're just like me. You got the same sense of humor as me. You got the same darkness as me. It's just hereditary. You fucking inherited that shit from me. But, um, you know, the uh, the other part that goes hand in hand with um, vaccines and stuff to eradicate said diseases and stuff like that is just simply washing your fucking hands and keeping your shit clean. Um, and there was a direct correlation of people being more clean and using soap and water and things of that nature with a decline of a lot of diseases. Do I think uh, these governments are using us as guinea pigs uh, with some of these vaccinations? Fucking A, I do. Why? Because that's what I would fucking do. It is a perfect vector for me to introduce shit into a population and see what happens. Well, Rob, the government would never do that. Oh, yeah? Look at the black population. Look at the shit they've been doing to the black folks for fucking ever. You know, um, you know, let's let's uh, fuck. Where do you think Hitler got his idea for, um, you know, some of his genocidal uh, thought processes? Uh, hello, that shit started here in America uh, with fucking eugenics and shit. We started that shit. It wasn't the Nazis that came up with that idea. No, we were doing shit like that to our black population. Oh, Rob, you no, know, we, we were not bad like the Nazis. We would never do concentration camps. Really? Well, we had internment camps that we did to my people, the Japanese, uh, after Pearl Harbor. And, uh, yeah, they, they rounded up every slant-eyed fucking nip and flip or anything that even looked like a nip and they threw them in fucking camps. So don't tell me that America won't do that because we've done it. Well, Rob, you know, 
uh, America is the beacon of freedom and hope, and we are the example to the world. That's right. We are the example to the world. We are the only uh, modernized country on a planet that has dropped a nuclear weapon on another country. Yeah, we got a lot of claim to fame, and yet and still we claim the moral high ground on a lot of things. And people look at me cross-eyed and say, oh, you don't need a gun and you don't need this. Why? Well, because I don't trust my government. Why? I just illustrated the reasons why I don't trust my fucking government to you. Uh, well, Rob, you're paranoid. That's right. I am paranoid. Guess what? Paranoia keeps your ass alive. It's only lackluster motherfucking zombies walking around on their fucking cell phones, drinking their mocha lattes, waiting for the next episode of uh, Dancing with Stars that are going to fucking die when the culling comes. I don't plan on being one of the motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it it's crazy. But at the same time, this is the thing that keeps me up at night. The things we're just talking about, these are the things that they allow us to talk about. And that should give you pause. Because if this is the shit they allow us to talk about, what are the shit that they don't want us to know, that they don't want us to talk about? Oh, fuck. That's a scary thought, Rob. No shit. Huh, Daisy? That's just scary as a motherfucker, huh? What are they really hiding? If this is the shit they let us fight amongst each other, debating over, what do they really have going on? <gasps> oh no, Shaggy, what are we going to do? So, anyway, you want a conspiracy? There's a big steamy pile of it just piled right up on your monitors, on your screen. Blah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> And this is this is this is just a small iota, a small little bit of the shit that I research and track and document, all in the name of being a good writer to have fun material to write about. But ow, how you like me now? All right, so we are past the hour, we're hour 17 minutes. Uh, unless somebody wants to throw another curveball at me for us to have a, a, a lively conversation on, uh, I'm, I might go ahead and end this because I still need to feed uh, my, myself, and I'm a fat man and I like to eat. I need to feed myself this uh, overly processed poison food that ultimately will lead to my demise, which is also part of Agenda 21 and uh, some other programs that the government has in place again the government has in place to do uh population control that's right me being fat is part of the plan yes indeed so anything else you guys want to have fun and um high five and and, and other good things to talk about or or um did i cover enough scary shit for <laughs> one night I laugh at this shit. Me personally, like, I don't give a shit. Like, fuck it. If all this shit is true and it's happening, that's fine. I, 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 I live with it. I ride with it. It ain't tripping me out. Cause, fuck it. Whatever, whatever happens, happens. You know. So, um. Anyway, I did want to remind you guys. Uh, again, thank you, Lyra, for for helping me out. And I'm also saying thank you ahead of time because, I think. Um, Infernal Justice might be a little little rough for you to edit. Just focus on the grammatical stuff and try not to contextually uh, absorb that shit. Um, I promise you, going forward, I can't think of any other stories that I have in my books uh, that is this dark. I honestly think Infernal Justice is uh, is my darkest, darkest book so everything after this will be uh downhill so this will be our uphill sprint and then after this everything is super easy so i appreciate the fuck out of you helping me with this um so that one will end the third uh that'll be the third book uh my goal for you folks that didn't know about it beforehand was uh i'm trying to bang out one of these novet books a week that's what i'm hoping but I know that's not realistic. Um, so if I can get 
25 in a year, then I will be fucking thrilled because one of the things that I really am trying to do improve uh, to the world is I am an infinite source of stories. Um, as you guys know who come on Saturday, uh, Sundays, we do the real-time story times. Stories for me are easy. I can come up with stories. You give me a couple of ideas, I'll bang out a fucking story for you. And I'll try to make that motherfucker as entertaining as possible. Um, and so I'd like to... I'd like to be an instrument to help things like the comic industry, which is starting to die a very bad death. I'd like to be an instrument in the video game uh, arena to be able to write stories in games that actually are engaging and fun, not just fluff pieces um, wrapped around, uh, you know, multiplayer shooters. Um, I'd also like to transition into movies, transition into uh, different mediums. Um, and that's my end goal. So that's why I'm doing all of this massive effort. It's not just because I, I want to write. It's because I need to write. I need to get the shit done. So anyway, uh, let's see here. People going missing national parks topic. Yeah, that's just food. That's just food for the fucking reptiles. Uh, you got children, homeless people, and the national parks. Those are fucking, uh, some of that is to feed the, um, reptiles and then the other segment of the people that are disappearing are either they are slipping into nexus portals and going to alternate dimensions a la kind of like bermuda triangles that spontaneously pop up from time to time in different natural environments or there's also the whole bigfoot thing where or wendigo or whatever indigenous uh massive beast you want to uh, paint that uh, gets discovered or gets fucking hungry or whatever and takes those fuckers as well. So there's a couple reasons for that. Um, I'm actually playing with ideas like that Vixen, the Angry Jackalope comic book. I, I would like to have a actual comic. Ultimately, where I want to take Rhymas Publishing, I want Rhymas Publishing to be a company that pushes out uh, books, comics, manga, manga, however you want to say it, um graphic novels um also want to have different types of uh music that we have a label that covers um and then also would like to have a way to pull artists uh artists from different things different walks of life into the creation process on these these visual um uh mediums comic books graphic novels etc but i also want to same use those same groups of people for video game concept art things of that nature um you know movies things of that nature i just want to pull everybody in and, and just rock and roll you know um films watch out casting couch time yeah you know i think i think uh i think it's gonna come uh a really bright light that's going to shine through a lot of these really evil corrupt people i think that's all part of the plan there's going to be this kind of uh grand awakening where um, a segment of these evil fuckers are just going to be thrown to the wolves and the society is going to respond to that like yes and then there'll be this kind of puritan movement where things get really sanitized and they'll come after people like me and Inferno Justice as a perfect example. And uh, they'll want to ban it. And they'll say it's it's crossing moral lines and blah, blah, blah. So we'll go through this period of puritism. And then there will always be an underbelly. And then the groups that still remain will live off of that underbelly until it starts to come back to mainstream all over again. So it's just – it's a formula. And they, they do it over and over. That's why I don't think – we're going to have an extinction level event. I think they already have the formula. They already have the patterns. They just keep doing them over and over and over and over again. Uh, let's see. National Park people show back up. Missing shoes and clothes. This is probably, been, again, that's just they got tagged and bagged. And for whatever reason, they were done with them. And they tossed their ass out. Shit, those people could be clones. They might not even be the actual people. 
the actual people might have been somebody like us that knows shit. They snatch us, get enough information from our brains, do a backup of the brain, and print onto a clone, um, electrically stimulate the clone's body to shape shift, and there's an exact copy of us down to the scar tissue. And uh, they dump that fucker out. It's got some amnesia, of course, because the programming hasn't fit yet. And now they're walking around. Oh, no, I was walking in the woods and I don't know. I lost time. Yeah, you lost a month and a half, motherfucker. Yeah, that's really weird. I, I don't know. Well, hey, let's talk about aliens again. I don't remember nothing about no aliens. <laughs> You know, there's there's probably just simple fucking reasons like that that we joke, and then we'd probably slap the fuck out of ourselves if we saw it and said, fuck, that's real deal. Oh, well. That's what I think. If shit really went wonkers, and they pulled me in, and they showed me stuff, I'd be like, nah, that's what I expected that. Nah, nah, that seems logical. But I'm sure it's sooner or later they could throw some at me, and I'd be like, wait a minute, what? That's the purpose of the platypus? Oh, fuck. You know? But anyway. All right. I'm going to end it here. My dog fell asleep on me. Uh, she never falls asleep on me. I don't even know why she's so clingy to me right now. I don't know. She's kind of freaking out. Yes. I'm talking about you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you don't even usually keep eye contact. Usually you look away. You're holding eye contact a really uncomfortable long time here. What's going on with you? You okay? Huh. I have to check my dog out. She's not. She's not acting right. Hmm. Okay, Daisy. Find out what's going on with you. All right, guys. That's gonna be it for now. If you like it, like it. Please subscribe. Tell your friends far and wide. Um, let's see. What? What? Uh, we got our show tomorrow. It'll be here next week. I have a trip coming up. I do want to call it out way in advance, uh, so you motherfuckers aren't caught by surprise. Um, it is the week. Of the 14th so that 15th and the 16th uh, I will be in Vegas with my wife so there will be no show on that Saturday and there will be no real-time story time uh, on that Sunday uh, what I might try to do is shoot some videos beforehand and just have those scheduled uh, to show at this time um, on those dates where I'm not around so there'll be some pre-recorded shit I'll have for you guys at that time. But um, yeah, that I will be out of town on those days, uh, just so you guys know. Yes, I do know that a platypus is poisonous. They got that little barb, and that shit hurts like a motherfucker when they get stabbed with it. I like the platypus. Fuck yeah, I want a platypus blade. <laughs> All right, that's it, guys. I will see you motherfuckers next time. Adios. You want to say goodbye? You want to say bye, Daisy? No? You just want to lay there like that? Okay. All right, guys. Later. Oh. Oh, you do? Oh, you want to say... Oh, she's sitting up now. She said, okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, you fuckers. <laughs> All right. Later.